This is calculations part 2 under waves and our focus this time round is going to be on refraction and therefore I hope you shall learn. So we want to go to question 1. A beam of light traveling through water of absolute refraction, refractive index 1.3, is incident on a, a flint glass surface at an angle of 30 degrees and is refracted at an angle of 24 degrees as shown in the diagram here you can see this is 30 incidence 24 refraction angle of refraction so this is uh, the glass we're talking about this is from water so calculate the absolute refractive index of the flint glass so this can be solved this way we need to to identify our uh, N1 for water which is 1.3 then of course that angle of incidence is what sometimes we can call theta 1 to be 30 R is the angle of refraction which is theta 2 24 so what do we need we need for the glass refractive index for the glass which is going to be uh, N2 here so we are going to apply the use of uh, uh, Snell's law so Snell's law is going to help us find this N2 from this relationship. So we end up having N2 equal to N1 sine theta 1 over sine theta 2. So this is what we have and therefore our work is to substitute values. So these values are going to be substituted in such a way that we have 1.3 here times sine theta 1 which is 30 okay, divided by sine theta 2 which is 24 and that is going to give us 0 0.65 divided by 0 0.407 which is just but 1.6 now question 2 a ray of light traveling through air which is having absolute refractive index of 1 is incident at an angle of 40 degrees on the f on onto first face first face of crown glass prism of absolute refractive index 1.52 uh, of, at, of angle 60 degrees. Calculate the angle of emergence of the ray at the second face. So in other words we're talking about some glass prism here and uh, we are talking about a ray coming from this other end gets refracted into the medium then get emerge you can emerge through this other end where this angle is what we need this I2 so when we need this I2 we need to try to bring in some thoughts of uh, geometry here so that we know that this I1 with R1 relates by Snell's law and then we also have R2 and I2 relating by Snell's law then this R1 and R2 with A also relates by properties of angles such that we have A equals to R1 plus R2 when we have that in our mind then we can progress as follows we know I1 is 40 N1 is 1 N2 is 1.52 R1 is what we first need to find so by Snell's law N1 sin I1 is equal to N2 sin R2 we are at this point here so I1 with the refractive index of that medium which is air in this case then we're talking about this uh, prism material which is actually where R1 is found so we link that by this relation and then we end up with R1 equals to sine inverse of N1 sine I1 over N2 and this is sine inverse of 1 times sine 40 over 1.52 and this is actually sine inverse of 0 0.423 which is giving us 25 degrees as R1 when we get 25 degrees as R1 our next step is to find R2 because we are going to use R2 and I2 to try to relate a Snell's law here. So if A is given as 60, you know this is the angle we talked about, and then we have R1 as 25, then R2 will just be 60 minus 25, which will give us 35. So when we have 35 as R2, then again we apply Snell's law, then N1 sine I2, which uh, we want to find out equals to n2 sine r1 r2 so this is what we have so i2 is sine inverse of 
n2 sin r2 over n1. Now these are actually here. When you talk about uh, n2, n1, yes, and we also have r2 here, so we want i2 which is the angle of emergence at the second phase of the prism. So we find ourselves substituting these values. So we have for you to get I2 sine inverse of that. So we have N2 is here, 1.52. So we have 1.52 times sine of 35 divided by 1, which is the refractive index, absolute refractive index of air. So when that is the case, then we just need to punch these values into a calculator and then you'll end up with sine inverse of 0 0.872 which is 60.7 degrees that will find us that angle question 3 a ray of monochromatic light is incident in air at an angle of 45 degrees onto a plain air water interface the speed of light in air is 3.0 times 10 raised to power 8 meters per second and the speed of light in water is 2.25 times 10 raised to power 8 meters per second. But A, you're supposed to calculate the refractive index of the light when passing from air into the water, that is the, the interface interaction. Then B, the angle of refraction, yes, in water. C, the wavelength of light in air, assuming it has wavelength of 405 nanometers in water. So this is actually uh, a three-part question and therefore we need to address part by part. I will first uh, begin by listing down what we have. So we know speed in the first medium is 3.0, the speed in the second one is 2.25. Then we have angle of incident at 45 degrees. Then we have this uh, refractive indices interaction at this boundary. So we have 1 to 2 is actually uh, n2 over n1 which is equal to sine i over sine r and this is actually equal to c1 over c2. This relationship is actually borrowed from Snell's law. So we want to try to use these velocities or speeds to find the, the refractive index as this light moves from one medium to the next. So this is basically what we have. So we know c1, we know c2 and then now we just get the uh, the result of dividing this so 3.0 times 10 raised to power 8 divided by 2.25 times 10 raised to power 8 you'll get 1.3333 this is what we find from for part a part b we are going to borrow the part that relates the sign of the angles and the speeds or velocities so this is what we have sine i over sine r equals to c1 over c2 we are finding the angle of refraction in water that is this r here okay so when you're finding this angle of refraction in water we need to use the speeds and the angle of incidence which we were given uh, to be 45 and then we solve this so we we want to proceed and you know when you rearrange this just by making r the subject we end up with sine inverse of C2 sine I over C1. And these values we have. So C2 is 2.25 times 10 raised to power 8 sine 45. And then we have this 3.0 times 10 raised to power 8. When you punch in this to in a calculator, you'll end up with 0 0.5303. And uh, sine inverse of this is 32.03. The other part of the question asks about wavelength uh, of light in air assuming it has a wavelength of 405 nanometers in water so in other words we have lambda 2 but we don't have lambda 1 okay so if you have lambda 2 and we don't have lambda 1 and we have c1 and c2 we can relate that c1 over c2 equals to lambda 1 over lambda 2 theoretically this is known already so let's make lambda 1 the subject that will be c1 lambda 2 over c2 uh, punch in values we know c1 is 3.0 times 10 raised to power 8 times 405 times 10 negative 9 for lambda 2 over c2 which is 2.25 times 10 raised to power 8 this will result into 5.4 times 10 raised to power negative 7 uh, meters because we're looking for wavelength 
Now question 4. Calculate the critical angle for light passing from flint glass with absolute refractive index of 1.65 to water of the absolute refractive index of 1. Now this is uh, simple. We want to, this, this value is supposed to be 1.65, sorry. Oh, 1.65 is here and then we have 1.33 here not when you talk about water it is 1.33 not 1.0 so we want to use these values as n1 is 1.65 n2 is 1.33 what we want to find is a uh, uh, critical angle and then when you talk about critical angle sine critical angle is equal to n2 over n1 this is theoretically known that's the formula we are going to use so when you want to make this a subject it's just sine inverse of this quotient. So we have n2 over n1 which is just 1.33 over 1.65 and sine inverse of this is actually sine inverse of 0 0.80606 and that gives us 53.7 degrees. So once again I want you to make this correction it's 1.33. Okay so that is the end of part 2 and the other parts coming remember to subscribe uh, for future studies. Thank you.